Um, so can you tell us a little bit about Logan in this film and if we'll see a different side of the character? Oh, yeah. I, I think the whole film feels different in tone, character-wise, than any of the others. And that was sort of our goal. I didn't want it to feel like the final chapter of a saga, but a whole fresh new thing, stake some new ground. And Logan in this film is more human, hence the title. Uh, he's sick. He's healing, his powers are dwindling, he's vulnerable. He's also looking after an aging father figure in Charles Xavier and hiding him out. He's under stress, he doesn't have money, he's a limo driver trying to earn enough bucks to buy the, to get by, to buy the meds that Charles needs. And there's some very sort of mundane, very normal, everyday kind of stuff going on. But clearly he's checked out, he's at the bottom. And so what James Mangold and Scott Frank did is kind of create a world of someone whose biggest fear is love and intimacy, because um, it only brings pain, of surrounding him with a family forced upon him. And can you talk a little bit about those relationships, mm. for example, with Logan and Charles in this film? So Charles has got dementia, Charles Xavier, who's been a father figure mentor, probably understands him and knows him best, because he's a closed book, Logan, so he quips and he's tough and all that, but Charles knows where he comes from, knows his background and knows the demons he's fighting. Um, so he knows him, and, but in this one, the tables are turned a little bit because he has dementia. So he's confused and he's vulnerable and he's angry and he's all many, many, many different things, childlike and then quite abusive. And, and Logan just sort of is in that carer role of taking care day in and day out and also keeping him hidden from authorities. So it's a great dynamic, it's great fun to play it um, with that, my great friend and one of the great actors I've ever met. The young girl who is created from DNA and it becomes clear that that uh, DNA might very much resemble my own which was stolen, so it's not like he chose to have a daughter or anything like that. But he's confronted with genetics very similar to his own and a task to rescue, save, protect her. He doesn't want that task and he pushes away for as long as he can. Um, but that relationship between those two characters, so the father-daughter is, I think, very strong and this young girl, Daphne, who plays that part, uh, is absolutely astonishing. And do you have any hopes for what the fans will take away or be thinking about after having seen the film? My goal from this, because I talk to fans every day of my life, every second day at least, for the last 17 years, is that every one of them, because I know they know it and they say it to me all the time, but after they see this movie, they say, that is the Wolverine movie we've been waiting to see. So that's my hope, that's my dream. And that was the guiding star really to making this movie. Awesome. That's great. That's everything. Thank Thanks, you so man. much. Hi, Lisa. Here with some interesting movie extras facts for you. One of the earliest animation techniques was stop motion. It was first used in the late 1890s. Notable uses of stop motion include King Kong from 1933 and the skeleton skirmish in Jason and the Argonauts from 1963. Now, Toy Story, the first feature-length animated film to be created with CGI, generated 1,000 gigabytes of data and required 800,000 machine hours of editing. Are you an animation movie fan? Let me know in the comments below and subscribe to our channel and check the notification bell to always be up to date with all the latest releases.